Hi, this is TJR for Music Worth Buying. And this last week, Apple released their new music streaming service called Apple Music. So I thought I'd take a few moments here to give not only my first impressions of Apple Music, but also make some comparisons between Apple Music, Spotify, and Tidal. I've chosen these three because I feel like they are the three most well-known of the streaming services. Now myself personally, I began with Spotify. Uh, it was the first music streaming service that I subscribed to. I started with their free service and then quickly grew tired of the limitations of it, so immediately went to premium, which is $9.99 a month. Now I should mention that I'm kind of old school about music. I actually prefer physical music. I like buying CDs. I like owning a physical copy. I like the fact that when you buy a CD, you're getting full quality WAV file. Uh, as opposed to when you buy digitally, uh, you are not getting full quality in most cases. The other thing that I like about buying physical music is that I like the experience of it. I like being able to actually look at the artwork, being able to read the lyrics, look at the photos that are included, uh, being able to read the liner notes and find out more about who did what and where. And of course, this is obvious to you if you've watched the show that Robert and I do. So along with using Spotify to basically preview albums before I buy them, I also like the fact that I could use Spotify to also really explore the past, really explore uh, artist catalogs that in the past I was not able to afford buying. It also just allowed me to study uh, past catalogs of artists whose music I may not have been interested in, but just wanted to study it. It also let me just experiment more with genres that maybe I would not have tried out. Overall, I found myself extremely happy with Spotify's service. It seemed to have the majority of the music universe out there. Granted, there were a few artists that I couldn't find, but they were, generally speaking, artists whose catalogs I already owned. The main thing that I really liked about Spotify was just how easy it was to use the interface, especially the playlist feature. A lot of people, of course, create playlists of favorite songs that they like. I instead used it to save albums. I would just simply hit uh, create, save as playlist, and it would instantly create it for me. I didn't have to write anything in, and there was that album saved for me as a playlist. And this was very useful for me in keeping track of albums that I was checking out for possible inclusion in the Music Worth Buying show. Overall, I was extremely happy with Spotify, but of course there wasn't a whole lot of competition at this point. It was pretty clear, though, that at this point, Spotify was the leader. Uh, they were the one that was at the top of the heap as far as music streaming services was concerned. And then along came Tidal. Now, Tidal immediately got a lot of attention and also drew quite a bit of criticism because it was started by a mega superstar music artist. And also because uh, the service proclaimed that it was going to be uh, more artist friendly and pay more to artists. One of the things that Spotify drew criticism for, at least among the artist community, was how little it was paying to artists as opposed to what it was paying to its company CEOs. And there is a rather vocal group of individuals out there on the internet who get really angry whenever artists say, hey, we should get paid what we're worth for our work, but don't get really angry when CEOs make millions off of said artists. And so for this reason, I felt that Tidal received a lot of unfair criticism. Now, one thing that Tidal uh, touted that set themselves apart from their competitors is they said they offered high definition audio but that high definition audio service came at a price tag of $19.99. And I really wondered, would people leave a service like Spotify, which they can get for free with limitations or without limitations for $9.99? So I decided to test drive Spotify and see what I thought. Now, the first thing I found out was that there is a $9.99 service for Spotify uh, and it has no limitations. It's just the audio quality with the $19.99 service is supposed to be better. And so I decided for comparison, I would try just the standard $9.99 service. Uh, the first thing I noticed about Spotify, or rather I should say about Tidal, that differentiated it from Spotify, was that the audio quality, even for the standard service at $9.99, was significantly better than the audio quality I was getting with Spotify. So right away, Tidal was winning points with me. I found Tidal's uh, interface to be as easy to use as Spotify. I found that both services offered pretty much access to the same music library. But what I liked about Tidal versus Spotify, aside from, of course, the obvious difference in audio quality, was that Tidal really did seem to be much more well set up for music discovery. Uh, Spotify would have their, you know, Viral 50 playlist. It would have its uh, new music playlists. But aside from that, 
I didn't really feel like Spotify was being proactive in helping me to discover new music. Uh, not so with Tidal, and in fact, with Tidal, I realized that their Tidal discovery feature was being handled by human beings. It was not being handled by an automated machine that listened to some of what I had heard and then tried to find th stuff that matched. You just had some content editors that were like listening for what they thought was, was interesting and different and, and exciting, and then putting together uh, a list of artists you should check out. And it allowed me to go through that list and hear just a sample track if I wanted to before moving on to the next uh, title discovery artist, and also giving me the opportunity to explore a little further by checking out the album in more detail. The more I explored with Tidal, the more I found I liked the service better than Spotify. The only real little nitpick I could find about Tidal was that in some cases it took a little bit longer for the tracks to begin playing than with Spotify, but then this is par for the course because Tidal was offering higher audio quality versus Spotify. And this brings me now to Apple Music. Now, prior to Apple Music, there was iTunes, which is where I kept, or where I should say, I digitally kept my physical music. Once again, I rarely buy digital downloads. I like to buy physical music, and then I like to rip and burn my CDs that I purchase into my iTunes. Or I like to digitize my vinyl records and put them in my iTunes. So for me, there's always been this distinction. iTunes is where I digitally keep the music that I personally own, and a service like Spotify or Tidal is where I go discover new music or where I research the past. And the first thing I had to get used to when I started using Apple Music was that Apple Music removes that separation entirely. iTunes and Apple Music are one app. I can toggle back and forth between the music that I personally own and am storing digitally versus the music that I want to stream and explore and discover. And like Tidal, I felt that Apple Music was being very proactive in helping me to discover new music. With Spotify, I had little interest in the playlists that were being created uh, by that uh, program. But with Apple, I found myself very interested in the unique types of playlists that were being created for me by Apple Music. Uh, playlists like um, obscure 70s rock tracks, uh, playlists that, uh, of tracks being done by the same uh, producer. And uh, recently I saw a playlist uh, that was intrigued me quite a bit, the title of it. It was um, live versions of hit songs, and haven't had a chance to listen to that one, but I definitely want to get to it. I also haven't had a chance to check out the playlists that are created by uh, Apple's curators and by uh, editorial staffs at other uh, well-known music magazines like Rolling Stone and Pitchfork. But I am curious to get to those. There's also the Apple Radio, uh, which has uh, live radio broadcasts with actual live DJs. And I've only explored these uh, minimally at this point, so I won't comment too much on this. What I find I like the most, though, about Apple Music is just the way it has found a way to combine both my own personal music collection with the uh, discovery method that is being made available to me by digital streaming. I also noticed that the audio quality between both uh, Tidal and Apple Music are about the same, actually. Uh, like I said, Spotify, not quite as good. One of the things that I found a little bit confusing at first with dealing with Apple Music is that I was used to the idea with both Spotify and with Tidal that if you like something, you can create a playlist. Uh, not so with Apple Music. You create your playlist in iTunes, and then you can add both your music that you own digitally and the music that you're streaming to a playlist that you have created in your iTunes. So it's a little bit different. I think I'm going to stop here now as far as this review is concerned. Uh, but I think I will be coming back to this topic later once I've had a chance to further explore Apple Music. There's a lot to explore with it, and I have only just touched the surface at this point. Apple Music is the same price as Spotify Premium and the standard version of Tidal, which is $9.99 a month for an individual, but there is a family plan too. If you have iTunes, and I think most people listening to this probably do, um, it's very easy to start using Apple Music. And you can try it out for free for 30 days. I'd like to know what your opinions are of Apple Music or Spotify and Tidal and if you've made any comparisons and what you think. So please leave a comment. For Music Worth Buying, this is TJR. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.